All right, gang, so before we kind of dive into the nuts and bolts of the program, first, you gotta know how to lift, okay? We gotta know how to squat, we gotta know how to bench, we gotta know how to deadlift. So the cornerstone of any strength program for me is a squat, I love the squat. It's gonna be the best builder for your legs and your, your core. And the reason why all these powerlifting movements are so effective, um, they're compound lifts, so it's gonna use a lot of muscle over a great effective, over the greatest effective range of motion. That's kind of why powerlifting is so accessible and so versatile. So whether you're a competitor or not, we're gonna show you where to start. In terms of the program, we have some like kind of variations kind of programmed in there. If you're kind of newer to lifting, we're also gonna show you kind of um, some modifications. So on the surface, don't think this is just a cookie cutter program. This is a template that could be kind of adjusted no matter what your level. Uh, and as long as you understand the principles, you can get a lot out of it. So we're gonna go through the squat right now. So we're just gonna kind of review over here, just the air squat, which would be like the most basic thing. So if, as, if you went through the warm up, you know we want good core bracing. So we wanna be able to breathe and brace. We wanna be able to twist our feet on the floor and create tension through our hips and then engage the muscles of the upper back. So let's take a look. How low should you go? If you wanna eventually be a competitive power lifter, let's just uh, pause on the bottom. You want your hip crease to be below your knee. If you're not a competitive lifter, just go to a standard that is consistent where you can lift pain free and then eventually hold that standard and increase that strength over time. So some ways that we could do that, if you're not a competitive lifter or you have no desire to be a competitive lifter, you can kind of start off with a high box and that might be fine for you. So you wanna think about what do you have, what can you own and what you can tolerate. And maybe over time, maybe you stay there or maybe you go to a, light, uh, a lower box and even a lower box still. And for some people, lifting with a box is fine. It's usually a little bit easier in the knees and it gives you a depth gauge. Now, if you don't have a box or you don't have something like this, obviously you could use a bench. You can kind of just use, you know, if, if you're just kind of tapping it, if it's, if it's a sturdy enough chair, but, um, Box squat is great variation for just people that are learning. And then let's say maybe you're not ready to use a 45 pound barbell yet. You could start with a 35 pound barbell, a PVC pipe, or if you have access to some weights or even a dumbbell, you can start here. You can start with some heavy dumbbells. Now let's say if you don't have some dumbbells available, you could do the same exercise with a plate. And this can be a great way to warm up. You could just do a plate front squat. So if maybe if your 45 pound bar is heavy for you, you can just do some sets here. I recommend starting off with some pauses and eventually taking the pauses away. It's a great way to warm up. Cool. Now we're gonna go into the actual barbell squat. How, how far should you put your feet? Where should you kind of put your stance? Just go where, wherever is comfortable for you. In general, if you have a lot of range of motion at the hip, some people like to go a little bit wider. Uh, if you have, have a lot of what we call internal rotation at the hip, some people like to put their toes a little bit more straight ahead. Just find a foot position and a stance that's comfortable for you. Find a bar position that's comfortable for you. If you're a little bit tighter, you have to go a little bit wider. So I'll, I'll demo this and then we'll show the differences between myself and Mel. So Mel's gonna do some squats, some squats here. So the first thing that she's gonna do is take her grip. Good place to start with your grip. Just think about doing a lat pull down and that's a good place to start. She's gonna come here. She's got the bar in between her trap and rear delt. She's electing to take a thumbless grip. You could use a thumbless grip or a hand, whatever's comfortable for you. I'll show my grip in a second. And since Mel's very mobile, she has her hands in very close. She's gonna stand up with the weight and she's gonna do a two step walkout and take a third adjustment step to adjust her width. We wanna be consistent with our setup every single time. Now from here, she's gonna breathe and brace. She's gonna root her feet in the ground, twist her feet in the ground while the big toe stays in the ground. So the big toe, little toe, and heel are all in contact and the weight is gonna be over the midfoot. And then we're gonna do the last thing. She's gonna bend the bar and activate the lats. So the lats are tight, the core is engaged, the ribs and the pelvis are stacked. She's gonna sit back, drive her knees out and keep the weight over her midfoot. She's going to a depth that she can control, she can own, and she could tolerate. And this is light verse, so then she would continue to increase the weight from there. Good. Now we're gonna see what a bigger person, human, animal, 
looks like. My grip's gonna be a little bit wider. I'm going to squat a little bit wider as well, and it'll be a slightly different position. Uh, also, as far as this, this rack would be a lo little lower for me for the sake of the video, you want it about your collarbone height, about sternum height. So I'm gonna grab it a little bit wider. One, two, adjust. So I'm gonna breathe in brace. I'm gonna sit back. I like to think about it pushing evenly with my legs and back. So I'm not kind of here. So I'm driving with my legs and my back evenly. I'm trying to twist my feet in the floor as I come down. So if I only push with my legs, that could happen. And if I only push with my back, I could lose my balance here. So even pressure with the legs and the back. So you notice I have my pinky off the bar. I find that helps my shoulders. So something to try. Should you wear a wrist, elbow sleeves, all that stuff, if it makes you feel good, totally cool. Okay, so that's as far as equipment goes. So you can go completely raw with nothing, just, and then what footwear should you use? Uh, in general, if you have a little bit less ankle mobility, elevating your heels can be good. So you could also try using a squat wedge or simply putting some plates under your feet. So if you like to squat close and you have, and you have a little bit of trouble with your ankles, I could also squat with an elevated heel, whether it be a heeled shoe or a plate under your foot or like a squat wedge. So most people will have access to plates, so feel free if that's comfortable, go for it. So use the squat stance, the bar position, the depth that's right for you. That's the squat. Now let's move on to the bench press.